Hello and welcome to Take Your Time, a Persona 5 Royal in Real Time podcast. My name is Jonathan Dorbush, and as always, I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Tom Marks. Hello! Good to have you I'm, here, Tom. I'm excited to be here. I, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to this every week now at this point. It's It's been a really fun <laughs> thing. I, I'm one of those things where it's like, I... I it's very silly, but part of me in my old my old manness now is like I have to go to sleep early on Saturdays to make sure that I can wake up early for the podcast. But then the other part of me is like I get to go talk about Persona for a week on the podcast, so it's yeah. like it's an all right trade off. Also, probably better for my health. Uh, but anyway, for for those who are not here about our sleep cycles, uh, you are probably here to hear a little bit about Persona Five because Tom and I, for those who may not know, uh, are playing through Persona Five Royal in, as I said, real time, along with the in-game calendar to our real-life calendar. They're off by just a day, but we're making it work. Uh, it's It's been a lot of fun so far. If you're just jumping in at this episode, or you happen to maybe jump in at last week's episode because it was Kamashita's Palace, uh, it was the first big palace of the game, I definitely encourage you to go back and listen to the full show. Uh, this is obviously us playing through the entire thing, uh, so we're kind of just going as we do, uh, and it's definitely uh, less of sort of like a TV episode recap and more of a... I don't, I don't even know. I it, like. I guess if you were if you were uh, doing a recap of book chapters, like I often probably wouldn't be like, I want to only listen to chapter thirteen. But uh, you know, maybe you do. And if you're here for that, <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, but of course, there there are a few episodes in the in the past to listen to. And thank you to everyone who has been uh, subscribing and listening and watching wherever you do. We very much appreciate it. Uh, before we get into recapping this week, which will be May 3rd through May 9th for the game, uh, I do have a few things to wrap up, including some comments from all of you. But before we get to those, we do have an answer to our pop quiz from last week. Yes. So last week's pop quiz question was, uh, in middle school, on lens Ryuji 500 yen that he has never paid back, uh, what did he spend it on? And we had a couple people guess, you said, right? Yes. Uh, on YouTube, two of the uh, comments we saw, one I think was pretty close, and then the other was, uh, I believe, on the money. Uh, Aaron wrote in on YouTube and said, I'm pretty sure our good good mama's boy Ryuji spent all his bus money to buy an aquarium gift shop gift for his mama because he's such a good boy. Uh, That's correct. That's true. But then that said, he did buy a dolphin. For his mom. Uh, but then Aaron followed up with saying, if I'm right, it's a little penguin statue, which is, you you were in the ballpark, but just you you missed the ball. True. I don't know how you continue that metaphor. It was, it was a dolphin plush, I believe. But here's the trick question of this. He did not spend the money on lent him on the dolphin. He spent all his money on the dolphin and on lent him money for both train fare home because he uh, had none okay so that was a trick question i hope i got you all so you did a little bit because as so aaron's <laughs> original answer was i'm pretty sure our good good mom was where ryuji spent all his bus money so like pretty pretty close in the ballpark close there, as you were saying yeah and then reed wrote in and said ryuji got a dolphin souvenir for his mom and so it's it's all also within, true all within the ballpark but you you, you used language to trick us tom <laughs> yeah like, so he did buy the dolphin for his mom but the money on lent him was for train fare. It's like you're some kind of writer or something. Ha ha. Uh, anyway, thank you to everyone who's been guessing for those. It's a lot of fun. Because uh, genuinely, even though I just played the game, I often forget what the answers <laughs> yeah. to those questions are. I'm, I'm looking for stuff either off the beaten path or stuff that like doesn't have VO because mm. then you just, it goes in one ear out the other sometimes. Yeah. So it doesn't go for that technically stuff. in either, but you know. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that killed me. I'm sorry. That stopped me dead in my tracks. We can move on. What did the uh, other listeners say? Anyway, we did also get a few comments and questions about things. Uh, some to help clarify uh, for those who are playing along at home, which I know some of you are, and we greatly appreciate that. Uh, though I do, again, want to reiterate that if you end up going a little bit ahead of us or you happen to be behind a couple days and you know need to wait to catch up and listen, play at the pace you want to. This is a long game. Uh, it is definitely a marathon, not a sprint. And uh, I think... I generally have enjoyed it when I take, you know, a break here or there in between some stuff. And obviously playing at this cadence, it kind of lets you take breaks when you want to, because some days can be really short. Um, yeah. Anyway, Dexter had written in on YouTube and said, I just wanted to clarify what are our stopping points uh, should be, because in my experience, the deadline was Sunday night. So the aftermath didn't occur until Monday, which I thought was supposed to be a part of next week's podcast. So we are... 
Um, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, we're doing it again. Uh, we are, and it's funny because I just responded to a comment on YouTube that was like, why didn't you guys just wait to do this a year from now? And they were joking, but I was like, oh, maybe, now I'm thinking maybe they were right. Uh, but essentially, <laughs> um, we record this on Sunday, but the show does include the Monday that the episodes go up. In game, in game Monday. In game, not real life. So we go by the dates. Yes. Not the days. Yes. Is the yeah. way we've tried to do it. So it's the dates of our real life Monday through Sunday. Yes. If that makes sense. Our our which, our real life Monday through Sunday, which ends up being their Tuesday through Monday. Yes. Yeah. Tuesday through Monday. Yeah. So uh, Monday is included in our catch up, uh, essentially just because our show goes up on Mondays, uh, and so we wanted those Mondays, especially because they often can kind of be important to be a uh, part of the show. But yes, so that that is something to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, so we're, we apologize for the confusion. Again, it'll make a, a lot more sense a year from now. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, as, as Tom was saying, uh, go by the dates, not the days of the week. Um, and so now there were a few episodes and you should know the, the, essentially the cadence, but like next week's episode will be the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, and the 16th. That should help. We, maybe I'll I take should, your word for it. We should just include that probably at the end of like what the next days are that you need to play. That would actually probably and, be helpful. And to everyone in the future playing this game and listening along next year, uh, sorry for all this discussion about dates, but then to everyone in the future a year past that, who's now a day behind, or You're maybe welcome. there's a leap year? I'm not sure. Time is a flat circle. Let's just move on. Okay, McConaughey. Uh, anyway, other than that one, we had a few other comments. I uh, just wanted to read some, which I uh, greatly appreciate everyone who's been writing in. Um, L said, I abandoned my near endgame Persona 5 save file to finally start up Royal. Thanks to this show. It's been a long time, but I am so glad I jumped in. Uh, and thank you so much. We appreciate your sacrifice. Uh, I know how much it can be painful to <laughs> abandon a late game save like that. So thank you uh, for jumping in. We're, we're happy to have you uh, along for the ride. Uh, Arkwing also commented and said, I can't remember if you guys mentioned it in a previous episode, but what were your thoughts on the new battle theme take over? I also don't think you guys mentioned the addition of the grappling hook for traversal in the palace. Uh, on the music note, uh, Tom and I had talked about this a little beforehand. Um, and Tom, I can let you sp speak to your side of it, but I think it's fair to say we both think the music in this game is wonderful. Um, yeah. but, uh, we were both thinking that especially for like a deep dive in the music, not to take away from like the current events as they go on, uh, during a slower week or a, uh, a quiet sort of like skipped week where some days are skipped or whatnot, we may do a, a more music focused deep dive, especially because, uh, we should have the physical Royal vinyl at some point this summer. That's when I am a bit told me when I ordered it, it would arrive. So, uh, <laughs> that'll be a good like reference thing to have, but, um, uh, I, it, I will say I, I liked I like the new battle theme a lot, uh, but I will also admit that sometimes I mess up surprise attacks just so I can hear last surprise instead because that's fair. I still like that song more. <laughs> yeah, L last surprise. It's hard to uh, it, it's hard to shake that one for how yeah. how damn good it is. But yeah, takeover is also still great. I think the additions in general on the music side are all all great. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. There's uh, definitely a really solid foundation from the original game. Uh, in terms of the grappling hook, I don't think we mentioned it because there's not really much to say about it in that palace. We'll probably get to it a little yeah. bit more down the line, I assume. It gets a little bit more involved, but essentially the grappling hook, after being in introduced in the prelude, uh, gets a little bit more time and, and like tutorialized a, a bit more in this uh, palace in Kamashita's palace, but it's basically used like twice. And then for the, uh, there's like a shortcut you can use for it when you're scaling Kamashita's palace. That's pretty much the only like notable use of it. Um, Again, I I, it, I think it's one of those things that's a nice addition. I don't think it, like, makes or breaks the, the palaces. I do think it helps with some of the traversal and whatnot. And uh, I, I assume it will come into play a little bit more. Uh, you, you did need it to sort of get to, like, the will seeds to me, which feels yes. like I wouldn't be shocked if those go hand in hand down the line just because they're probably, both new things. But. Probably the most damning thing I can say about the grappling hook is that uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate uses the grappling hook more and in more interesting ways than Royal does. <laughs> That's fair. I, I think it's fine. It's a cool addition. But yeah, similarly to what, what you were saying, like 
the issue like it, it feels sometimes like basically they used it because they were like this is the geometry that we have of this level from yeah. the original and like we want to sort of do something different or weirder with it so like let's make a grappling hook path right here and and yeah it just it just i guess we didn't touch on it because like you said it's just like not it, it's really cool it's a neat addition but it's not like a fundamentally changing like huge change to the game i don't think yeah it's um i i am glad it's there so far like in terms of i think it will probably help to make some like cool transition scenes and whatnot with with joker zipping around but yeah it's one of those things that like th since this isn't a platformer at its heart uh there's only so many uses that they can really get out of it at least so far uh, i'm excited to see if it, if it gets it's developed anymore down the line um, but before we jump into this week, one last thing. A few people actually asked about this, uh, about how the fact that there are, uh, and if you don't know this going in, I guess it's a, it, we should warn you, but essentially there are some specific qualifications to get to the royal uh, added content, the new sort of semester, big chunk of the game toward the, toward the, the end of the calendar. Uh, and there are certain things you need to do to be able to get it, uh, or you could miss it. Uh, a few people were saying, like, are you, are you going to warn people? Are you going to let people know? Uh, and obviously, I haven't gotten there, so I I haven't played through the, those parts. Uh, Tom has, and so I want to leave this pretty much up to you, Tom, to sort of... Explain. Yeah, so this is definitely a, a valid concern, and I, I hear people on it. What I will say, without spoilers, is A, I think it's still too early to talk about it because there's not anything... You haven't reached any of the things you need to do yet. Uh, and B, we're going to try to give... Uh, guidance in a non-spoilery way what you need to do to trigger that, which I think we will be able to do in a non-spoilery way. Um, and C, to kind of put people's minds at ease, I think that it is absolutely the type of thing that you can you could miss if you didn't know what to do, but as long as we kind of, like, tell you a couple things that you should do, like, it's almost impossible to miss as long as you kind of follow that right so like it's it's not going to be a thing where you're going to be scrambling like oh my god i can't believe i missed this like as long as <laughs> you, you as long as we give you a couple like pointed but spoiler free hints you should be fine and we're not at that point yet so we'll get there when we get there but uh definitely make sure uh that you uh i can't think of anything i haven't had enough coffee today <laughs> i'm sorry i was trying to think of i didn't want to say something that was like too dark i was like don't let ryuji die but like that seems really unfair <laughs> to people. so uh anyway let's move on from there we're talking this week about uh may 3rd through may 9th uh this is of course the first post palace week uh so definitely less uh action intensive than the last week uh less uh sort of emotional highs uh and lows uh than everything that happened around kamashita's palace and, and just to sort of generally set the stage uh as someone who hasn't played royal but played persona 5 what i do appreciate about the cadence of this game is that like those are really major impactful moments and because this game is so long it does have the benefit of letting you actually reflect on those things in a way that often games, like once you get to the end of a boss battle, it's like, okay, onto the next level and to the brand new thing. But it's like, no, there's, there's time to like absorb the very emotionally heavy things that all these characters went through sometimes in silly ways. Um, but nonetheless, you, you get a chance to actually sit with it, which I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And this is also the type of week that I really like because there's a really nice blend of free time and story moments that is actually, like, it's really well paced, I think, this week, even if it is a little bit on the briefer side. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a shorter week because uh, there there are things that you kind of just can't control. Uh, and those are more toward the beginning of the week where, where some of the story stuff comes up. So uh, let's start there as we'll be talking about uh, some exciting things like mementos, uh, some possible hints at Joker's past, and of course, what we named our teams. Uh, I, I have, uh, if you've heard me say it before, I think I have said it on other shows. Uh, I stuck with the name that I love, but we'll get there in a little bit. Uh, but let's start first with, uh, yeah, as, as we're catching up, uh, May 2nd, the evening, I, I believe was a free evening. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I'll, I'll double check my calendar, but I don't think anything too extensive happened that night or I could be completely wrong. I worked out that night. So definitely nothing happened interesting after Kamashita <laughs> revealed <laughs> what happened. Um, but moving on from there, May 3rd, uh, as we had mentioned last week, this week is Golden Week in the game. Also, correct? well, should we should we touch cuz we talked about this a little bit beforehand, right? Yeah. This like evening thing is funny because um 
like we said in a previous episode, sometimes the story will just like railroad you right if you do the evening thing. Yes. And like I've been putting my PS5 in rest mode generally yes. because I don't use it a ton. So I'll just like do the evening thing and then pause it right in between. Uh, but obviously if you want to play other games or like do other things, right, you, you, that's not an option. And like I had that happen to me too. Uh, I think the rule here is do whatever's comfortable for you, right? Like it, we're generally going to be like, I'll probably play the evening and just put in rest mode. Jonathan will probably just wait before the evening. Sometimes like this week I did that and then I wanted to go play a different game. So I actually played just the morning of the next day this week for the next week just to like get through it, right? To save. Don't worry about it. That's what I'm saying. Don't worry about you it. You abandoned the <laughs> sacred sacred commandments we established when we started the show, Tom. Yeah. Well, you know what I am? In my heart of hearts, I am a rebel, so... I rebelled. Oh, okay, Jin or so. Uh, anyway, moving on from there. <laughs> Remember the cut line from the film that everyone loved? Anyway, um, <laughs> that's my favorite Rogue One story. Uh, May 3rd, uh, Constitution Memorial Day. As Tom, you have helpfully written in there for me. Thank Yay. You. Yeah, we um, got a chunk of three three holidays. Yeah. Because uh, it's Golden Week. Yes, exactly. Uh, which for... Uh, Japan and everyone there obviously means a lot more than for us. Uh, and uh, currently, the, like the way I was introduced to Golden Week, full transparency, it was because there was a PlayStation Store Golden Week a few years ago sale. And I was like, oh, I don't know what that means, but okay. And then I, I looked into it. And it, uh, it's interesting how games can tell you a bit about real life in these ways. Yeah. Um, anyway, May 3rd is a bit more of a story heavy day. You don't really get to do too much. Uh, the day is mostly comprised of you washing dishes while Sojiro hangs out uh, at, at the cafe and uh, you're watching a report on TV that kind of hints at how this event that happened at Shujin Academy isn't just, you know, being noticed by the faculty and the students and whatnot. Like, it is it is getting some attention more widely. Um, so there, there's a TV report going on about Kamoshida. Uh, some students are being interviewed about him. It's very much presented in what I would say is probably a, a pretty spot on parody uh, or replication of like local TV reports of a tragedy sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it has that weird tone where they're very clinical about how they're dealing with what is obviously a very dark story. Um, but uh, it... it I think what's important about this day and Tom, and let me know if you feel anything differently is pretty much that this is showing the larger context. Like, yeah, um, I think it's, uh, we've hinted at, but like, it's fair to say the story of all this will get larger and, and the scale will increase. And I think this shows that like, Hey, what the phantom thieves are doing, even if they're not getting the notice is starting to get notice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I also, this moment has one of my favorite little moments where, uh, Sojiro's looking at the TV and he's like, wait, isn't that your school? And you just have this moment of a dialogue choice where you can just be like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, you can just like, you have to like totally play it off. Like you don't know what's going on. Even if you're uh, like improving your relationship with Sojiro, it is really funny occasionally just be like, I don't know what you're talking about, old man. Get out of here. <laughs> like yeah. you could basically be that type of kid to him, even, even though you can also work on your relationship. It's very funny to be like, I don't know what you want from me, guy. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it is a funny little moment. And uh, then you have the, the evening to yourself. You essentially have free time. Uh, I just brewed some coffee and made Sojiro yeah. like me a little more. Yeah, I made lockpicks. And this is like a great example. This whole week, really, but this day is the first kind of bursting moment of it where like in the base game, you'd just be told to go to sleep and you wouldn't have a, an evening time here, yeah. right? Like this whole week you have evening times where in the base game you wouldn't. And it so helps with the pacing of things because suddenly store, like I was saying, story and freedom and like choice kind of are mixed in a much more natural way. Yeah. And so I really appreciated this on, on a repeat playthrough of being like, oh yeah, this is like actual time to do things. It, it also feels more true to the game's rules because like having mm -hmm. the lack of free time on this day especially as a day off doesn't really make any sense um yeah like it, it to, or to to not have anything doesn't really make any sense and so to have this time to be able to do something even if it's small like as we were saying uh working out uh which i took some protein for of course and uh, <laughs> or you know making lock picks whatever you do it's just nice to have that time that you wouldn't have otherwise and it doesn't it doesn't break the game. It doesn't like no. go against what we're doing, but it, it just, well, you it, have a lot more to do in this one yes. too. There's more confidants, right? There's more 
places to go. There's more things to do. So, like, just having some extra evenings when you can is really valuable because you just need that time a little bit more. Absolutely. Uh, moving on, though, from there, as otherwise uh, May 3rd is kind of a quiet day. May 4th, a.k.a. Greenery Day. Thank you, Tom. Uh, mm -hmm. is another sort of mix of uh, story and free time, uh, as Tom was pointing out to. Uh, this one is, uh, it starts out in the cafe again, uh, and you have a customer walk in, and it's Psy. Oh. Uh, this blew my mind the first time I played, I'm not going to lie. Because Psy, for those who still don't know the names, is the, invest or the, the investigator, the prosecutor, who's interviewing you in the fast forward, right? Mm -hmm. So... Suddenly this person that you're going to be in this very confrontational situation in the future is just chilling, having some coffee with you. And it's like so weird. And it's a nice dichotomy because obviously like in the scene, you're totally right. Like the first time it happened. And I'm very curious, like if, if you are a first time player, uh, please comment on the show or write in like what your reaction was to seeing her here. Because, yeah, it's one of those things where like she doesn't know you at all right now. Obviously she right. will in the future. But right now she has no cognition of you. Uh, and so you're just kind of. Like, there's, there's a part of the player where you're nervous where, how this scene is going to play out, but Joker has no reason to be really nervous other than just, like, who's the stranger? Um, right. And I, I love that sort of occasionally the, the times where the game plays with you and your expectations rather than just Joker's expectations. Yeah. Um, moving on from there, though, within the day, they talk a little bit basically about, like, the mental shutdowns and the things going on in the world, um, you know, obviously with the, the recent news of Kamboshita as well. Um, she's trying to wonder, like, are, are there connections to these things? Like, what's, what's really going on here? There seems to be a larger issue at hand, but no one really has a full understanding of it just yet. Uh, and then she orders the house blend, and that's kind of kind of her day. Uh, this is also <laughs> the day, though, where you can go sell the metal, uh, Kamishida's metal, which was essentially the the palace uh, treasure that that you took out um, when it transformed into the real world. Uh, so you head over to the the gun shop uh, where the owner, and forgive me, I genuinely don't know how to properly pronounce his name. Um, how would you EY? say it? EY? EY. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was EY or EY. Um, no, EY. EY, thank you. Um, you go talk to EY about, uh, you know, wanting to sell this to him, uh, and he he ends up trading you for 30,000 yen, uh, which I just, I did the conversion out of curiosity, and that's about $276 uh, US dollars currently. Um so the dollar is not doing well, but uh, <laughs> it's it, that happens. And then right after that, um, a, a, a few other uh, I believe they're written as stern man and something else come into the shop. I forget the, the exact adjectives used. Um, and, and basically you, you have a very strange relationship with EY now because there, there is, I think you, you could approach him out this week. And I just kind of wanted to talk about this, like at large, you could approach him this week, but you can't really start any sort of confidant thing with him because you need a very high guts level. Yeah. But he also, this is also the moment where he just like hands you a sketch bag, right? Yep. We learn more yes. about EY being super sketchy. And right before these dudes, these like cops, I think they're presented as busts in, um, he hands you a bag and it's just like, uh, this is for you. Don't open it and bring it back later. It's a gift, but don't look at it and bring it back later. And you're like, what? <laughs> okay. What a weird thing. Also, like <laughs> you're dealing with a teenager who's coming in to buy fake guns and selling you <laughs> metals. You think this weirdo isn't going to open the bag? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. And then you open the bag immediately outside the store. <laughs> like, yeah. it's not, you have no chill whatsoever. You don't, you don't even turn the corner. Like, he's down a back alleyway. You could easily walk 10 <laughs> feet and not be in his view. Like, he he has windows. Yeah. Um, it's just wild. It's, it's a very strange uh, moment, and it's definitely something that uh, can tie into... Ey's story or Ey, excuse me, uh, which I really didn't explore in the first game. I don't think I really ever explored that confidant path, and I, I kind of want to this. It's time. I, I won't spoil anything, but it's actually a pretty cool one. Cool. Uh, Ey is sketchy, sketchy as hell, but um, yeah. he's yeah. They 
you know this game. They do a good job of humanizing everyone. So yeah. it's it's a good one. Oh, I mean he's he's selling a teenager model guns and, and knives in, in the back alley of, of the Central Street in Shibuya. I am yeah. co- totally confident in calling him Sketch. But uh yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting one. So so you have that little encounter and everything, um, and then you uh can go home and have free time in the evening, I believe. Yes. Um free time in the evening. On does call you, um, at the end of the night, or at least she did for me. I don't know if that was just like a, uh, a moment I had. I don't remember. I, I, l- I didn't, if I did, I didn't even mark it down. That's fine. It was just her kind of like checking in about things. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just like nervous about stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and that day, I think I didn't say last day, the last night I did lock picks and then this night yeah. I studied. Okay. Because um, midterms are coming up and so... Midterms are going to be next week. It's going to be really funny because next week is going to four days out of the seven days of next week are just going to be like fly by midterms. So, uh, but I studied because I wanted to get knowledge up for that. Yeah, me too. Uh, Though I then did look up a thing that I guess we could slightly talk about spoilers for at the end of the show that made me wish I didn't spend so much time just randomly studying because apparently there's (laughs) one opportunity to get like three extra points or something very easily. Mm. Uh, anyway, moving on from there. Yeah, I think that night I started watching the files files, uh, as you had, cause my guts was low. X folders. X fold. Excuse me. The X folders. I don't know why I said the files files. I have um, a repository repository of useless persona information now <laughs> with all these trivia things. I appreciate it. I, um, so I started watching that because yeah, my, my guts at this point was still, uh, below level two and I kind of wanted okay. to get, I wanted to get everything to level two this week. That yeah. and knowledge were my only lacking ones at this point. Gotcha. Um, moving on from there. May 5th, a.k.a. Children's Day, is uh, sort of the the epilogue uh, to the Kamashita's Palace, uh, you know, arc to a certain extent in terms of they had talked about wanting to celebrate and wanting to use the money that they might get from pawning off this medal to go celebrate. Uh, and so they go to have a hotel buffet celebration. Uh, and this is, I, I think, a very defining moment that you may not think about it then, but it is very important for sort of like the phantom thieves in general because this is very much like a a starting point not just because you're naming the team but it's sort of them deciding uh, there's a lot that goes on here and a lot we can talk to but this is also i think most importantly the moment where they're like hey what if we kept doing this what if we kept trying to find ways to help people to help change hearts to to save people to realize that like kamashita is not the only bad person out there uh part of it is a little bit born from like what if we keep tackling bigger and bigger people and getting notice? And like, there's a little bit of the fame thing, but like as teenagers, that totally makes sense. Yeah. You like, we live in a world where everyone, you know, is trying, is, is on TikTok and and like, you know, trying to go viral. So it's not surprising that they'd be like, how could we really make it big as the Phantom Thieves? Yeah. And, and also it's an important moment because it's one you don't really think about, but like, you as a player of the game know that the Phantom Thieves are going to continue doing this because that's the game. And if they stopped, what would the game be, right? But it's important that for that they have this conversation because that was never their intention, right? Was to start a team. That was like their intention was just to stop Kamoshida, who was this one person affecting their lives and was doing bad things. And so the fact that they have a moment where they're in this buffet and you as Joker with Morgana are kind of eavesdropping on all these people over different meals, um, talking about the Phantom Thieves and being kind of uptight adults about stuff and being jerks. And then like on has this really rude interaction and you and Ryuji, which we can get into, have this really rude interaction. And it sort of spurs them to be like, this wasn't Kamashita wasn't the only bad adult in the world. And it, it starts to change from, you know, there's this one person affecting our lives to why are adults so dumb, right? Like, why are adults so, uh, like, complacent in their kind of, like, po- like just the, the gross stuff that's happening in the world? And why are they so rude? And, like, wait, we now have a thing that we could do to make the world a better place and get famous doing it, obviously. But, yeah, it, I think that's a really, really crucial moment for them to have totally yeah it, it really i i think you're absolutely right and it goes back to that idea that like because this is a longer game they get that time to actually talk about that and it isn't just right. like well we're a team now let's go do this again it is a genuinely like 
thought through process for all of them of like, okay, what does this mean that we've done this now? Because it is like, you know, we did do this crazy thing where we went into this alternate reality essentially, uh, and you know, fought a bunch of weird phallic demons and stopped our, our teacher and, and forced him to have a change of heart. Like that's some pretty impressive stuff. What if we can do it again? And Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's a really nice balance here. I think of like, this is all happening around kids who are just like, we have roughly $300. Like, let's go have an amazing (laughs) meal. Like that's also the the counterbalance of it is like, whoa, you know, it reminds me of back in those days where like you had a hundred dollars, like money in triple digits was unfathomable at that age. Uh And so like to have that much money to go celebrate like this, um, uh, and obviously, you know, I'm I'm converting it from yen just for for our benefit, but um, yeah, it's this really nice blend of like reminding you who they are, where they are at in their lives, and as you were saying, like really coming to this conclusion of like, oh yeah, why do adults just let this stuff go? Mm-hmm. And we we happen to have this incredible opportunity. Why don't we take it? As our talking cat, you know. Is, is sitting here with us um it's beans beans uh do you want to do you want to mention your love of beans <laughs> it's just my favorite line in the entire game is ryuji goes back and only gets meat on goes back and only gets cake and dessert and then they bring uh you and morgana just like a plate of stuff and they're just like yeah there's just some beans on there and morgana goes beans and it's like Oh my god, it's so great! And well, then Ans like, oh yeah, and there's some other stuff and some also and some more beans. And he, she just he goes, more beans. <laughs> it's just like so amazing. It's like I don't know why that one line has stuck with me, but man, has it. It's a it's a really funny moment. Also, you uh, your excitement made your camera go out of focus, which is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's this really funny moment. Uh, there, there are so many little like bits and pieces that again just remind you like they are just really excited to be able to like have this food and, and have a great time. I wrote down the line. I think it's An who says it, who just like yells in like just delight that like ooh this part's cream cheese, as if it's just like some startling revelation of cuisine that there could be <laughs> cream cheese in, in in this dessert or whatever she's yeah. having at the time. But yeah, it's just this very funny, um, wonderful moment that, uh, of them properly becoming a team and not just um you know they're not just a bunch of a-holes standing around uh in a circle they're a team yeah they now. bond yeah this this whole scene is really good for that right it 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 has funny moments it has bonding it talks about the story in a larger context and like you were talking about with the news thing um it talks about kind of it it, it like forges their beliefs right in a very kind of tangible way this idea that they're gonna do this again but like they they have to pick targets unanimously right is like a thing i think they decide here yeah. and like all that stuff is just really important right to to make it, it just all comes together very nicely i don't know i just this is a very good kind of cri- uh, critical moment in the story I think. yeah it also gives rise to you being like they they essentially ask you the player joker to be the leader um, which, right. you know, kind of explains that away for why you'll be helping lead the charge, even though you never say a word. Um, <laughs> and, and of course you need to decide a, a name for the team. And, and there are some other emotional beats I do want to get to, um, by the elevator and such, but Tom, I do want to know what you named your Phantom Thieves. Oh, I just, I just did the default. Okay. The Phantoms. Cause I never, I never changed that. And it, every time you can, the only time you ever even see it is when, uh, you call in another team for help occasionally, which also mm-hmm. happens pretty rarely. And I think I've never seen a team name that's not just the Phantoms. Well, because I think most people just do default. You hopefully one day will see my team's name. What's your team's which name? I, I've been very proud of since I thought of it during my initial Persona 5 run. Heart Attack. It's a very good one. It works on so many layers. That's um, a very good one. I'll and give it to you. Because then their theme song... Uh, can be when Billy Joel sings uh, Heart Attack, ack, 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 ack. that's just always in my head as like the way it would go. Um, so anyway, why would they pick Billy Joel as their theme song? I don't know. That's what happens when uh, you grow up on Long Island. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I, I like the, the, the funny thing about this team name picking to me is that you pick it 
And then they never refer oh, to yeah, themselves totally. as that. It's never. They're important. like, you pick the name and then they're immediately like, the Phantom Thieves of Heart. That's got a good ring to it. Like that wasn't already their name. Yep. And like, that wasn't what you picked. Like, it's just so weird. It's, it's such a funny little choice. Yeah, it, it is definitely an odd thing that I uh, remember from my first round being like, I picked this name and it never mattered. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you stressed over your name choice for the week, I am curious to hear if anyone out there uh, chose a name or you chose the default. Definitely let us know in the comments. But um, oh, yeah. I just want to emphasize, like, don't worry if you stressed about <laughs> it uh, because it will not matter for the rest of the game. I'm sorry. <laughs> it comes up, I think it comes up like once or twice in the course of the story it's, and never again. Yeah, it is very infrequently used. Um, yeah. but, but other than that, there is a little bit of... Um, of other story that happens here, not just among the Phantom Thieves themselves, uh, but at one point there is sort of an altercation uh, by the elevator, um, mm-hmm. in which uh, a, ma- a a a bald, bespectacled man uh, and his seeming bodyguards or henchmen or something uh, comes over as it's Ryuji and Joker waiting by there, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. After after Ryuji just threw up in the bathroom from eating too much meat. Yep, of course. Classic Ryuji. <laughs> um, and they sort of come over, and even though there's people waiting, they kind of just push their way through. Uh, I think they uh, elbow or, or shoulder check Ryuji uh, and try to make their way to the front of the line because essentially they, they want to get on there first. Uh, and Ryuji, understandably, because he has a fuse uh, so short it would never belong in a Mission Impossible movie, he um, gets real pissed. And wants some answers for why they're cutting the line. Uh, and these guys are not caring at all. They do not want to put up with you whatsoever. Um, yeah. You are uh, insignificant specks in their lives, basically, is, what, is what's conveyed to you pretty quickly. Um, but what that altercation also involves is Joker kind of having a migraine flashback, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, yeah. Which is not often how I'll have memories, Tom, I'll tell you. I don't know about you, but often when I think about the past, my brain doesn't hurt immediately. Um, <laughs> but I think it does speak to a little bit of, like, he's definitely repressing some memories, is, I think, how I read it, at least. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, especially as someone who's trying to make this new life for himself and, and keep his head down, it's maybe not the best thing to think back to these. But um, you you sort of get the sense that he he recognizes this man's voice, uh, there are flashbacks, I think, to just sort of an eye on a face is, I think, yeah. pretty much the only, the only bit of the flashback. Yeah. But um, it's it's something here that I think, like, if you're paying attention, um, can lead to things that I don't want to spoil too much. But I, I, I'm sort yeah. of... We didn't talk about this beforehand, I realize. But, like, it's clear that this is pointing to things that are important to Joker's story. Yes, and and this is this th- what I'll say about this without spoiling because I don't think we have to get super deep into it because there's not a much a ton in this moment specifically, and I'm sure that the people who've picked up on it have already picked up on it. Yeah, but uh, this is a really good thing that this game does uh, and is about to do again in a different way of um, seeding later things early, right? Like it does a really good job of not just making it be jumping from stone to stone, but like sort of like setting things up in a long, long, long game sort of way. Um, and I, I, yeah, it's just another one of those moments that I, th- I think is really important for later, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I, I do love that. I, I'm totally with you. I do love that the game does that. And I think that's, again, another luxury or benefit of it being a longer game is that they do get to set up these things um, for, for big payoffs down the line. Uh, I think we've already mentioned, uh, it was, I think, related to one of your quiz answers, but there's a character who's been talked about or referenced um, or he, who you've been able to see in the background who will, who will pop right. up later. Um, something like Takemi is technically in the background when you first show up in Yangon Jaya, but you don't right. know who that is. You just see this doctor's coat sort of walking behind you. Uh, they'll do that quite a bit. And I, I, yeah. I'm with you that I think they are really great set offs and, and set ups and payoffs. Um, set offs and payoffs doesn't really have a <laughs> ring to it. Um, but yeah, that is a, a little scene that I think it's, it's definitely important to keep in mind down the road, but for now uh, is is more of a blip in this day of celebration. Um, in addition to that, while they're there, uh, just to wrap up, Ryuji basically says as they're deciding on the next target that they should want to go for someone big. Um, right. 
We'll get to that in, in a, even a little bit later this week of the scale of uh, targets for them. Uh, but other than that, uh, that happens, and you you also get a notification for Royal, this is new, that uh, a thing called the Thieves' Den is open. Yes. Well, there's a couple other things that happen at that. Yes, that... excuse me. Yeah. So one, one of the things is also that they do discover the fan site, which is yes. the Phantom yeah. Aficionado's Perfect. website that's like this site dedicated to what they've done and has like a message board and stuff like that. Although that comes up a little more the next day. Yeah, I was going to lead with that for Mishima. But yeah, you're totally right. And then, and then the other thing that happens is you get another flash forward, right, to Psy. Yes. Um, and th- this is a really interesting flash. Like this is... I think the moment where, like, the palace... Kamashita officially ends. Like you said, this is the epilogue of that. And now Kamashita ends, and Sai starts talking about your next target, which is, like, how did you target this next person? And it's a guy named Madarame. And that's, I think, such a... This is, an, again, what I was talking about with the setups. Like, I think this is such a good formula, is you're not it's not some big mystery who your next target is every time they did this with kamashita too where at the beginning of it they say why did you target kamashita and then you get a story that kind of explains what's happening and then this time they say okay why did you target madarame and now we're going to get a story of how we ended up targeting madarame and i just really like that structure a lot i really like that structure no totally i i i agree with you i do think it it lends something to the cycle of I think a thing this game does really well that we were sort of just talking about the like the long term setup uh, setups and payoffs, but it is that uh, you the how do I want to phrase this sort of like the cycle of information that you get and its mm-hmm. importance is really well balanced. I think throughout the entire game, absolutely. Yeah, totally. But sorry, I didn't want no, to. Inter- no, no, you're Thief's all good. Den shows up too. Yes. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't go to it yet for this week. Okay. Um, did you hop into it? So yes and no. This is the funny thing about the Thieves' Den. It's a thing that they added for Royal that's just total frosting, right? Yeah. Like, it's not it's not story-related at all, necessarily. It's got uh, a kind of expanded list of achievements that are much harder to achieve than, or much more involved to achieve than the ones for the actual, like, trophies. Um, it's got, you can customize the look of it. You can run around as Morgana or Ryuji or any of your party members. You can buy these trophies with coins that you get from completing the achievements and there's also this poker mini game in it basically it's this card game that you can play with your teammates that has full voice acting and silly interactions and lines it's actually it's like pretty fun it's very it's just this little sort of like hangout area for whenever you want it the funny thing is um it's based on your profile not your save data so my Thieves' Den is completely full of endgame spoiler stuff and completely <laughs> decked out because I've already platinumed the game. And That's so really funny. my Thieves' Den is com- like entirely, entirely like fleshed out almost. I think I only have like 55% of those in-game award things. But yeah, it's 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 funny coming to it now and being like, Oh well, yeah, this is just done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good to go here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll jump into it on like a good down week and maybe we can have a discussion around it then. Um, yeah, sure. Great. Sorry, apparently the coffee is not going down well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I didn't go in there, but you, you were totally right. I The Phantom Thieves website and the Thieves Den, two separate things, but uh, again, I they're expanding sort of the mythos of the Phantom Thieves, which we'll be getting sure. into a lot soon. Um, but other than that, uh, you, you have free time again in the evening, uh, plus a Velvet Room excursion. Um, yeah. And, and Tom, what did you do with your free evening? I think I, I studied again. Okay. Yeah, I've been trying to just get... I am At this point, I have all, everything but knowledge at, th- at two, and so okay. I wanted to just get knowledge up. I did. I think I did a studying this night, too. Yes, I did. Yeah, um, a studying here as well. Uh, but then, yeah, you have another Velvet Room visit, uh, and, and this is more, again, I think sort of as part of, like, the epilogue-ness to Kambashita's Palace. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you talk a little bit while you're in there sort of about the relationships you're building. Um, and I, I, I didn't write any down specific dialogue, Tom. So if there was anything from this conversation that you felt was like really important, 
to set no, up. No, but... to, to be frank, I skip, I go through the Velvet Room stuff pretty quick because it can be really repetitive. That's very um, true. Yeah. Like, the, I, I enjoy the Velvet Room. I like the structure of it. I like this, the lore of it or whatever, but it definitely can, like, just bring up the exact same points over and over and over again sometimes. So a lot of the time I'll skip through, and kind of the main thing you get out of this one is that Igor is happy with you, mm-hmm. and uh, you get a confidant point in him, and now you can carry eight personas instead yes. of six. Yeah. And that's kind of, like, the main important bit of that, but... Story-wise, there's not a lot that happens. I find that what he says often is ter- talking in circles or, yeah, as right. you were saying, repetitive in a way that like kind of just sums up what we've already been through. And so I get it. It feels like a Shakespearean play yeah. where like they weren't sh- like they know you're going to forget a lot of this stuff over a hundred hours of gameplay. So they just kind of repeat it a little bit so you can like. Just, like, remember what the core themes are and what the whole deal is, because you're just not talking to him very often. So, yeah. yeah. It's it's definitely helpful in that way, but, yeah, as you said, it can be very repetitive and kind of uh, easy to skip. But there will be some other uh, Velvet Room stuff this week to talk about. Uh, yeah. Moving a little bit forward, May 6th, uh, basically there's... Uh, a little bit of both in class and then uh, wider Shujin Academy stuff going on. Uh, Kawakami in class basically tells everyone not to discuss Kamoshida because everyone wants to know details and they're like, don't talk about these things, which is not a good message to send to kids. Um, but uh, obviously, the school is still dealing with the fallout of this. Um, that, and go ahead. If I may, that yeah. moment's also really nice to me because it's Kawakami says that she like didn't notice what Kamashita was doing and really regrets it. Yes. And like, yeah. that's, I think a really important moment because Mishima was like, all the teachers know about this. And so it does set Kawakami, at least Kawakami apart as being like really up- upset by it as well. Absolutely. And like unhappy that she didn't like see it was happening. So yeah. I, I just think it's important to her as a character. No, I totally agree. I will say I, a thing I didn't like about the conversation was that she basically just gives all the kids a free psychology lesson that like, She's not a trained psychologist, so I don't know if she should be espousing all these things to a room no. full of impressionable, teenage, impressionable teenagers, but, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, anyway, we, we also get a little bit um, about uh, some some female student uh, talking to the principal. Uh, we'll, we'll, loon, we'll learn that she is Makoto. Uh, and the principal, as Tom, I think you've succinctly written in our run of show, basically blackmails Makoto into investigating the Kamashita incident. Uh, the principal essentially is like, something was going on here. Uh, there, there must be more to it. This like the students or something must be involved that we want to get to the bottom of. Uh, you're the teacher's pet. Basically you're the, the one who's always sucking up to us to want to be the ideal model student. So you help us. Yeah. And she's the class president, right? Exactly. She's the, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, they threaten her through her sister who works at the prosecutor's office, basically being like, boy, it would really be disappointing if uh, you brought shame to your family is like the subtext of it. Um, and like, yeah, it's 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 really messed up of the principal, yeah. but also really Mako- like motivates Makoto to be like, all right, I'm gonna find these people. Yeah. And she sets off to basically hunt you down. You do immediately learn a little bit about at least like Makoto at this point in the story. You get a lot about her character just from that moment. I, th- I think it, yeah. it explains a lot of who she is and, and what she's dealing with um, behind the scenes as well. Because obviously, as we've said, there's a lot about the, the face people put on versus what's behind the mask. Man, mm-hmm. behind the mask probably would have been a good name for this show too. Anyway... <laughs> Moving on from there, uh, you do get another uh, confidant uh, in Mishima because uh, the Phantom Thieves website is live. And guess who's behind it? Mishima, who is really bad at not uh, keeping a secret that he knows everything about you. (laughs) Which I think is one of those really funny things that it's like, I don't know, if you're paying attention a little bit during all these things, you'll probably notice the same three kids very much at the forefront of all these things. And you could probably guess, but uh, that's kind of what Mishima does. uh, And he's made the Phantom Thieves website to, uh, to help you out. And it's a, it's a nice little thing to, again, expand the cast, um, give you a new side into sort of how the world and other people view the Phantom Thieves. Um, Mishima, definitely more with him will come up uh, just this week. But yeah, I really enjoy that. uh, He, he wants the site to essentially, 
uh, help you and the Phantom Thieves on your mission uh, to do what you can to help get the word out, to help uh, raise awareness, and to help you hopefully take down more terrible people. Um, yeah. And as, especially as someone who suffered at the hands of Kamashita, it's it's uh, sort of heartwarming to see him want to, um, you know, take what he's gone through and find a way to help, uh, which I appreciate. Um, yeah, this this surprised me a lot. I didn't know Mishima was going to be a confidant the first time I played through, and I was really surprised that this sort of, like, bit player in the Kamashita thing came back and ended up being a pretty important part in the Phantom Thieves as... As, as you go forward with him. The funny thing that I love about this character that you'll see more of this week, but also just as you spend more time with him as a confidant, is that there's always this air of, like, not ever quite admitting that you're the Phantom Thieves to him. Mm -hmm. You're, like, always leaving him in the dark, like, a little bit, and he'll just enthusiastically talk at you, and you'll be like, that's cool, but uh, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Like, and it's, like, so funnily half-hearted. It's, yeah, it's a very funny, because he doesn't care. Like, you can choose those dialogue choices where it's like, I'm not sure what you mean by that. And he's like, <laughs> oh, you, anyway, here's the site, and here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a very funny back and forth. You're totally right. It's it's a bit of a running joke that'll pop up. Uh, that Even as, like, your confidant um, relationship, without spoilers, like, a, a, even after you know Mishima for a little bit, you can still kind of have those dialogue moments where occasionally <laughs> yeah. you're like, We've been doing this for three months. I don't know what you mean by that. That's yeah. I, thieves? What is that word? I don't know. I'm sorry, but yeah, it's a it's a fun little bit, and uh, you'll now see uh, on the day by day calendar in between the days uh, a little fa Phantom Thieves the fan site uh, sort of uh, question and co like the main question for the board and some comments will appear at the bottom right hand corner every day, and that gives you sort of a general sense of where the world sees the phantom thieves at that point in time yeah and i believe the first poll question is do you believe in the phantom thieves yes. and it's at like six percent right Real like nobody does yeah we're, we're not doing great especially because i mean to be fair you know this happened like three days ago so we're we're getting mm -hmm. through things uh anyway moving on from there it's another free time in the afternoon and the evening um i hung out with on in the afternoon and then watched uh the second half of uh the x-files parody uh, in the evening. Yeah, I hung out with On as well because it was the first opportunity you get to yes. hang out with On. And yeah. you need a certain, I think you need kindness too for it. Yes. Um, yeah. And you can't do it before the Kamashita stuff happens. So yeah, I hung out with her too, which was fun because you get a little bit more insight into her and Shiho's relationship, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, then I, what did I do? Oh, I also walked around a little bit because while you can't, you can't like, engage with ey until you have higher guts you can go back to him and mm -hmm. sh like give him the bag back and what he'll actually do is give you a gun mm. right away that's like a new gun in royal where in royal there are these like you can modify the guns and this is a modified gun where it has half the ammo but deals has a high chance of dealing shock which is actually one of my favorite guns in the game because you only have four shots per fight, but if you can just shock each target, then you can immediately deal technical damage to targets that you would not otherwise be able to exploit their weakness with. Um, so it's super valuable in that regard. Oh, okay. So I, I did that. Hmm? Sorry, I, was, I just was going to say, I, I think I went back and returned it either today or the day after or like some point in there and just completely didn't realize it was that sort of gun. I didn't look into it yet, so that's really good. Yeah, it's super different. Cool. It's it's very weird. And it's um it's the the modified guns or the like elemental kind of things you can put on certain guns is really interesting. And shock is always really valuable <laughs> because it shock can be technicaled with just a basic attack and yeah. you risk getting the shock on yourself. But if you're just doing it to do an all-out attack or to try to get a, conf a persona that you don't have an otherwise good way to weaken, it's super, super valuable to have a gun that's just high chance of shock every time you shoot it. Totally. Um, so there's a little gameplay tip for you in the middle of all this story stuff. <laughs> so I hung out with On as well. I did some of that stuff. And then uh, at night, I talked to... Uh, so you can finally leave at night, which is a good yes. thing. Yes, yeah. Sojiro throws you the keys and says, I'm sick of waiting for you, uh, which is very adorable. So I went to the, I talked to the politician in the square, who okay. is uh, eventually, as you can find out from the map, eventually a confidant you can get. But you, first he's like, oh, I can't, I'm looking for an assistant, but I can't use you because you're inexperienced. Anyway, I'm going to go to that beef bowl shop now. <laughs> and huh. so 
then you go work a part-time job and that's what i did is i worked at the beef bowl shop cool uh and just got a little money that time and nothing else happened cool uh moving on from there uh somehow i was like oh it's a light week and we're already uh, nearly like at i know at we can time. we can keep going <laughs> um may may 7th uh the following day uh makoto does confront you and the group on the roof uh at your hideout uh, and basically lets you know that she is onto something that you are all up to, knows that you are somehow involved in these mysterious goings-ons, uh, and also threatens to essentially say, like, hey, we're going to make sure this roof is locked, because uh, that shouldn't be a thing p- kids should do, uh, yeah. be getting up here. So essentially you're losing your first hideout, uh, short-lived, but uh, definitely a, a, a one that I look back on fondly, because uh, it, it kind of speaks to, like, the makeshift uh, moment for the Phantom Thieves at this point. So essentially, yeah. you're losing a hideout. You're getting a little bit more of a sense that Makoto is on to you, and that you know, she she's going to be investigating you all. Um, but as you're doing this, you're also trying to decide like, hey, we need other targets. Um, you also need to go study right now. Essentially, the two big things are like, what is our next target, and are we going to pass uh, midterms? Those are, those are <laughs> your, your sort of uh, big emotional through lines at the moment. Um, so anyway, you worry about studying, but the gang also then heads out to essentially the station in Shibuya uh, to kind of look at what's going on on the Phantom Thieves website, see if they can find a potential new target and whatnot. Uh, and you're checking on there, and you find uh, someone to go perhaps investigate. And that leads you to Mementos. Mementos! I didn't realize this happened this early. That's I didn't what we either. were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I totally forgot Mementos came in. I thought it was at least after Palace 2. Um, I did not realize it came back this early, but it does make sense once we get into it. Uh, this is essentially a tutorialized section of Memento, so we're very much just uh, at the surface level of it, literally and figuratively, because uh, <laughs> Memento goes down deep into the underground. But anyway, it's um, this is sort of a, as Morgana sort of explains to you and, and as sort of intimated is like, Mementos is a, a palace on mass it is essentially the like cognitive world uh connective tissue um yeah for for those who are not creating their own cognitive spaces and palaces um this this offers sort of a through line to everyone else's you know cognitive selves um yeah and it takes the form of essentially an underground subway station which makes sense as you're going in there from the subway station um and and as you go in uh, you you get a little bit of a transformation, yeah. <laughs> because you you know it you're gonna have to travel around a lot of space. So why not have a vehicle? And what if that vehicle could be your cat? Yes, Morgana turns into a bus. Yay! <laughs> uh, you've probably seen Morgana as a bus, uh, a van, a, bu- a bus, whatever you want to call it, uh, on. Uh, promotion materials uh, in Strikers promo content. I think Morgana as a bus is, is featured pretty frequently. Uh, it's not a total spoiler, but uh, if you've managed to avoid it, congratulations. This is one of the stranger turns for a character uh, in your party. <laughs> uh, and essentially Morgana is your vehicle. So you all have to get inside Morgana uh, and drive around. It's definitely a little gross. He's definitely very excited that An is there. Um, and uh, essentially you navigate these uh, procedurally generated tunnels um, mm-hmm. that are uh, I, I guess this isn't a huge spoiler to say every time you go into mementos it'll be a bit different um, yeah the layout changes on each floor the layout changes there there are certain key markers like you uh, for this first mementos run through it's safe to say you you have like your entry point and the end point that lets you go down another level those will essentially be there for you to find each time uh, though in different uh, configurations the tunnels will go off in different branching paths um, some chests, you know, will be there sometimes, some will not, and you'll, you'll be able to pick things up. Uh, but essentially you're going through mementos to tackle this one person, uh, Nakanahara, uh, who you're confronting their, uh, shadowed self basically in a like side path in mementos. Um, Yeah. And this, this is important, right? Because it's basically establishing that you're not always going to need to go... Your only targets are not going to be palaces, right? Yeah. Like, you're you're also going to have these little bite-sized moments, these little mini-bosses with their own little contained stories that are much smaller scale that take place in mementos, which I think is really important that you're not just, like, 
going on these fight droughts between each palace, you can, if you want, go into this place and grind for levels or complete requests or, you know, do whatever you need to do. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of those things that, like, um, in Persona 5, it, it's incredibly grindy to play through mementos, and I know they have done some stuff to address that in Royal, which we don't really get too much of a sense of this time because we're only here very briefly. So I'm excited to talk about right. that as we go through the, the game more. Um, but essentially, you have this confrontation with uh, Nakanahara. You uh, ha- cause them to have a change of heart. Again, as Tom was saying, it's it's not something you are going through a full palace for. Mementos is mementos, and you'll be able to find these other people later on. Uh, but he also, while you're defeating him, mentions how he feels like his bad behavior was in part because of the bad behavior that he suffered at the hands of Matarame. Uh, which again, hey. as Tom, you were saying, was... They drop these little hints, and this is definitely officially we're sort of in the Madarame chapter of Persona 5. Definitely. Um, before you leave, though, um, as, you're, <laughs> as you're trying to exit Mementos, this boy dressed in white uh, appears as you're trying to leave. His name is Jose, and he's studying humans. His um, name is actually Jose. Oh, right. Excuse me. I, f- I forgot that they do that. Yes. They pronounce it Jose. I'm not sure why, but that's okay. I don't know either, but uh, excuse me, Jose, uh, I want your help with their research. Uh, um, And so essentially uh, they want uh, more flowers that you will find throughout Mementos and they will uh, in turn reward you for your, for your progress. Um, Yeah. It's a very random insert that Royal makes. I won't go into this much right now because we'll interact with Jose more in the future, but um it's a very odd insert. Yes. It's fine. He's a weird, cute, quirky character, but like it, it definitely is one of the parts of Royal that feels like they just sort of stuck it in there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's it definitely feels shoehorned in there for sure here. But um, I am I'm excited to see how Mementos has changed because it was definitely as we were saying. It's it's one of the more grindy aspects. Of- yeah, they made it a lot better in this one. It's good to hear. Um, but yeah, so basically that happens. He gives everyone a glowing star. Uh, and then you're you're on your way. Um, anyway, uh, basically what you get here that's important story-wise other than that and before we move on is essentially Morgana wants to really find out what is at the heart of Mementos. Um, mm-hmm. you, you're trying to get further down. You only go very, very briefly through here so far, but essentially wants to find out what's going on. And as you're theorizes that as more people know about you, right? You'll enter this public consciousness more and can go deeper in, I think is the the explanation there of why like a giant door opens up for you. Exactly. Uh, after that, uh, mysteriously, someone is watching you while you're in Shibuya. Ooh. I'm sure that's nothing. No, no, can't be anything. Uh, and then <laughs> uh, I think that night I just studied. I studied too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on from there, just to wrap up the, the last two days, uh, on May 8th, you hang out with Mishima at the diner, uh, which is now open. Uh, it's it's been open. Uh, it, it opens in May. It was not open previously, uh, and he he's basically pitching you to be your PR guy. And again, you yeah. can be like, I don't know what you're talking about, but that sounds great. That's, yeah, that's he, essentially the. Combo. This is like a mandatory hangout day with Mishima, and it's the it's the same thing, right? He's very enthusiastic about like moderating the forum and making sure you can like help people out through that forum and is kind of a little too enthusiastic but like also yeah hey it's good when your pr believes in you um yeah so anyway you you have that conversation you're essentially hey guess what he's your pr guy now um Mm -hmm. and then moving on from there as it's a sunday in game uh i bought some plant stuff from tv i wrote it down sure sure uh i i got a smoothie and drank uh which was for guts yeah um and then my studying that night got me up to rank two Okay, cool. What That's, did you, congrats. Thank you. I, I went to the beef bowl shop again nice. because I wanted to try to get the politician. This time I did run into him. So I had, for for those who don't know, you got to do the beef bowl shop and run into this guy at par, as part of working at the beef bowl shop. And then, uh, then now I can go talk to him and actually get him as a confidant eventually. Yeah, it's, um, I haven't even started doing that. I feel like I should soon, but I never actually, um did his confidant at all in oh, Persona okay. 5. Is it is it a good one? 
It's useful-ish. It helps you with, like, negotiation stuff. Morgana hints at that. But, okay. yeah, it, it helps you with negotiation stuff. Yeah, I think I maybe did, like, one session with him in mm. the base game because I was like, I don't have anything to do today. I guess I'll go talk to this guy in, like, eight months into the game. <laughs> the, the only thing I will say real quick about the Mishima interaction, too, is mm-hmm. it's a little bit of a bummer that, like, he's talking about how he's working all night and, like, basically crunching to, to help you on PR. And... This is one of those places where mechanically the dialogue system can be a little frustrating because the like most beneficial mechanically choices are basically encouraging him to do that. And the choices where you're like, man, maybe you should like calm down a little bit are like he's like really doesn't like that. Yeah. So there's this there's this de- debate with me between me that's like between like I don't want to keep encouraging him to like work all night on this. But at the same time. I gotta get them sweet music notes. Yeah, so. it's real tough. Um, but uh, yeah, he he works a bit too hard for you. Um, he does. It's he he means well, but take take some rest, Mishima. We're worried about you. Take your time. <laughs> uh, anyway, from there, uh, yep, it's it's a, it's a free evening, um, and then you move on to May 9th, uh, which uh, pollen problems are only just beginning. But there's pollen in the air, and that might affect mementos. Uh, m- mementos. I think I said Mentos. It, it won't affect the candy, but uh, it might affect Mementos, uh, which we can get to a little later because I didn't I didn't go to Mementos. But if you did. No. OK. Um, so anyway, you have. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. So, yeah, th- this this day begins with a on on the train still feeling yes. like someone is Excuse watching me. her. Yeah. But then you guys meet up to talk about on, on you. I think you meet up on the roof again, which is weird yeah but anyway you meet up to talk about how you have more targets through mementos because okay. of um uh mishima and and the fan site and ryuji's immediately like let's go let's do it let's go back in i'm ready to go and on's like we have midterms to study for yep. this is kind of weird man uh and then you are given the choice right away if you want to go back into mementos or not and i checked the like network thing and f- Fifty-one percent of people immediately go back into Mementos that day for a second day in a row, oh, or, or I guess for almost a second day in yeah, a row. There's yeah. a day between, and I that shocked me. That's really because surprising. Yeah, I always wait almost as long as I can mm-hmm. on Mementos in in kind of free period times because I want to gather as many targets for Mementos as I can at once. So when it was like, oh yeah, fifty-one percent of people just jump right back in for a single target, I was like whoa like that is really startling to me so i will say the thing there um i think the reason is and and this is a little bit on the on the game's fault for sure i sometimes the dialogue sort of impresses upon you the fact that you should do something right immediately but you really don't have to there there are like there are similar things with like in a palace when you go to a save room and you maybe have a conversation with the characters they can be like whoo i am wiped i think we should take a break you might then be like, okay, I'll take a break. I did that the first time I ever played Persona 5. I was like, oh no, the characters are tired. I will go help. Uh-huh. You don't have to do that. Um, yeah. There will definitely be times where like, it seems like you need to, but again, then there will be other times where you definitely do need to. So it's, um, right. it is definitely hit or miss, but I, that number shocks me, but it's not totally surprising when I think of it in those terms. Yeah, Cause it, that's fair. That's fair. It does sort of imply to you that you should go do this, but I didn't do it either. Um, I did briefly stop into the Velvet Room because of the unlocked uh, challenge battles, uh, which are new for right. Royal. I didn't do those, but essentially these will be like, again, another way that like if you kind of are itching for some battles uh, in between palaces, this is a place to go to get some uh, items from to, to uh, essentially it's like a score attack sort of thing. You're trying to get high scores right. to, to earn rewards. Um, I didn't do them then, so we can, unless you did, we can talk about them. No, later. I did most of those uh, the first time I played through, so I was, like, less inclined to immediately do them this time. Cool. Yeah, I'll probably And definitely... you can always go back to them. Like, they just get easier as you level up. So. Exactly. I'm going to partake maybe, like, a few more levels in. Um, yeah. Anyway, I hung out with Takemi uh, to get okay. that. Because I finally had guts at two, so I could continue it. 
Um, and nice. then because of our confusion about things, I didn't do the evening. Uh, but consider that the the mistake of this week, and then then I'll move on. What did, what did you do with your time today? So I I got I went to the gym, the real gym with Ryuji, oh, nice. which unlocks okay. the gym, uh, and got him to level five, which is nice. great. And I won't spoil that story because I'm kind of rushing through it a little bit. So, but it's a nice little kind of follow up to continuation of his story. Uh, and then I did do my evening, which was uh, I studied with On because the game does this thing right before midterms where you're allowed to spend free time studying with a person and then you get both both knowledge and friendship points with them so i studied with on and that got my knowledge to level two so i'm not gonna fail the test i am excited i am thankfully at knowledge too but yeah that's the night i was sort of intimating that like i wish i had waited to study for that because you do get the the friendship bonus to it as well yeah right um yeah. but I'll, I'll probably still do it when i go back to the game because fr- friendship get- points are good <laughs> totally they give you a lot of um opportunity and like you said encouragement or kind of nudging towards like you should really get your knowledge up right now yeah and it's it's definitely possible to miss it the first time i played i missed it for these midterms because i wasn't it yeah. wasn't really in you my don't have head much time but, yeah it it is a bit of a uh, like a quick crunch that you need to get through but um yeah if if you're not already take the next couple days where you can to study because it's gonna hit i think on the 11th the yeah, there's one day. Okay, it's just one day. The, it's so, just the Tuesday, and then the midterms start Wednesday, go, so hurry up. Go study, or hopefully you've taken Tom's advice and been saving every two days and can maybe go back a little bit, because it's, it's yeah. definitely worth doing. Uh, but that pretty much wraps us up for that week. Uh, before we wrap up the show, though, uh, of course, we have uh, in tune to Persona 5's love of quizzes and questions. Uh, we have two two quizzes for you uh, on my end persona pseudonym where I asked Tom to guess what the uh, name of a persona is based on their pseudonym uh, given a persona five before you collect them uh, this week's one I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep it easier since we were on some of the original ones still uh, but this one is the brutal cavalryman is that Barith? it is congratulations yeah! it is indeed Barith. <laughs> Uh, I realize I should probably give a bit of a pause there. So if you're listening, just like pause it after I say the name. And then, like, <laughs> I'm can... sorry. No, no, you're I'm go- sorry. It's, I should have like given more attention to the moment. That's me mm. not learning from all of my years watching game shows. Anyway, <laughs> Tom, you have a pop quiz question for us. I do. Uh, this got? is pop quiz for next week. Uh, I'll give you the answer. You can leave comments uh, or whatever in the thing to uh, to know, to guess what you think it is. And we'll, we'll let you know if you get it. This week... Uh, Mishima has made himself your PR person without you asking to, and he's given himself a self-assigned, very official title, which, uh, in his follow-up to your cafe conversation, he says, it's very important that you get this title correct, and, uh, it, please get the title correct. So, what is Mishima's official title? That's the question for you. I, I don't remember, so he's gonna be really mad at me. Yeah. This isn't going to yeah. go well for you. Me. You're not going to get those music notes. No, I'm not. Damn. Uh, well, I will if I just listen to next week's episode of Take Your Time. <laughs> uh, and that is going to pretty much wrap us up for this week's episode. Uh, again, Tom, thank you so much for joining me for this wonderful journey we're on. Cheers to you and my empty glass. Uh, we, uh, of course, new episodes go live every Monday, so stay tuned to those. You can find the audio version on uh, basically your podcast service of choice, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and a few others. Uh, if you can or are willing to, if you're enjoying the show, please genuinely uh, consider leaving a review or following the show, uh, or if you're just really enjoying it and that platform doesn't allow it to, share it with your friends. Uh, it, genuinely, it helps, uh, and we we love doing this, and we, we definitely want as much of the persona you know community who who wants to talk about this game to be able to partake in the conversation uh so definitely consider leaving a review or anything if you would like to we'd greatly appreciate it uh but also if you want to see our beautiful faces bright and early on sunday mornings uh as we record it you can check out uh the youtube version of this which is on the dornology youtube channel just go search uh, dornology or take your time and you should be able to find it uh you can like and subscribe and hit the bell and all that youtube jazz there <laughs> uh and then of course you can find tom and i on twitter i'm at jm dornbush and tom is at tom r marks um stay to our tw- stay tuned to our twitters in case there are any ever like shuffling around of things or as we announce guests or whatnot uh but you can find uh info and everything else we do uh there but uh as as is usually the case it feels like morgana is just about to tell us it's time to get some sleep so uh that is the end of this week's episode tom thank you so much for joining me of course love it
And thank you to everyone out there for listening and watching. We, we hope you're safe. We hope you're well. And uh, I need a catchphrase for the end of this. Goodbye. <laughs>